Welcome to today's edition of Diplomatic Passport. I am Robert Garikaim Kondua, and on this program, we explore key issues, including the response to COVID-19 from the African perspective and from Zimbabwe in particular. Now, last month, there was a contentious case that the government had to deal with. The story of the so-called UK 65, who arrived home from various parts of the world to be confronted by a compulsory state-provided quarantine. But as they would find out, the facilities were less than decently habitable. Suggestions were made and interventions were sought to have those who could afford it be housed in shelters of their choice, presumably hotels. The government would have none of it. It made sense. Testing, isolation, quarantine, and even repatriation had to be in the hands of government. If those functions were privatized, then what would the government be doing, if anything at all? But that has shifted yet again. After suggesting that testing be done by private companies, which they have since recanted on, and with repatriation of transport costs uh, being the burden of returnees, now another responsibility seems to have been passed on to someone else. Those in quarantine can now do so in places of their choice, provided they were paying for them and they met the government's criteria for places of, of quarantine. Now, government's position was made known yesterday. Resources to look after them in terms of food, in terms of uh, other provisions that they may need. But there's another element to uh, the returnees. There are returnees who are saying we don't want to be in public facilities. We would rather pay and be in more comfortable facilities. And if you look at this matrix from cabinet, you will realize that uh, uh, cabinet has said, yes, if there are those people who want to pay for themselves, we, we should set up uh, those private uh, facilities, but they have to be inspected uh, by the health authorities and approved before they can take in uh, any returnees. So that has been granted. But you have to understand that we have some of our citizens who could not pay for themselves. So the state has to continue to provide for them. And like I said, we can uh, assure the nation that the resources to look for those, uh, to look after those returnees who are coming in. Well, there you have it. Now, tell us what you think. Is government handing over responsibility for things it should otherwise be doing and passing the bug? Or are they genuinely responding to the requests of people who wanted to go on their own way and fund their own decent accommodation? Now, send in your views and comments on our Facebook page. And as the show progresses, I will be reading out some of those views and comments here on the program. Now, we have been hearing about the term, the new normal. Things that we will have to change about our lifestyle culture after COVID, if not in the new age of COVID. Now, these seem to be far-fetched and far-flung ideas, but today, I want to look at everyday things that we will all take for granted, but which will need to change going forward. Today, we'll look at 10 things that, of course, will have to be rethought. Sponges, you may have heard of these things that you use every day hanging in your shower, but some studies show that it is necessary to change a sponge every three weeks because they're in constant humid contact and uh, that favors the appearance of germs. Another thing we'll have to change are bath towels. Now, it is recommended to change the bath towels every three or four uses since the mold begins to be generated from the first moment in which we use it, even if we do not see it with the naked eye. Imagine that, three or four uses. The bath mat also. After two weeks, it is time to give a little air to the mats to put into, you know, like getting out of the shower. And, well, you need to check the moldy reality that is hidden underneath that carpet. The toothbrush. This is one of those things that everyone takes uh, for granted and does wrong. Nobody is saved. Every dentist recommends that we re replace our toothbrush at least every two to three months. So you know, it's time to retire your toothbrush no matter what love you have for it. Bed sheets. If we think about the number of dead cells and the sweat that we leave on the sheets every night, it will surely not surprise you that we should change them for new ones at most almost every two weeks. The mattress, lovely, but you know it's comfortable 
and makes you feel absolutely happy. But uh, it can last you up to 10 years with proper care and maintenance. It is recommended, however, to turn it over every few months so that both sides of the bed breathe every so often. Those pillow covers, if you're fighting acne or some other skin disorder, the germs are in your pillowcase. Now, after a week, you may have something uh, to do with it. You need to change them regularly to avoid this possible problem. And also those wash bags where you carry our dirty laundry. After a few trips to the washing machine, uh, the bag where you carry the dirty clothes will accumulate enough dirt to dirty the clean clothes that you carry back to your closet. So wash or clean them regularly uh, and you know, you don't need to see that accumulation of germs. And of course, those makeup brushes. Cleaning these brushes every few weeks has always been essential. However, after about two years, the most appropriate option would be to replace them with a new set. And of course, now you would need to use them and not share them. Finally, that kitchen scorer that you have, you will not get your dishes really clean if after two weeks, a week or two, you're still using the same germ-filled kitchen scourer. So be sure to use a new scourer before starting uh, to lather your dishes. Certainly, that zeroes in on life as we know it and brings out the harsh realities of what we have to change going forward. Onto the streets of Harare now, where it seems lockdown is a thing of the past, especially today. Now, our eagle-eyed uh, gentleman, Wilson Kakurira was on the streets of Harare and the flow of traffic, the buzz, the human traffic, it's just another ordinary day in Harare. Apparently the country is still under lockdown, albeit touted as phase two. Yet if the views on the street are anything to go by today, then it certainly suggests that level two lockdown is another word for what Zimbabwe has been doing all along before COVID. The numbers officially may not be rising, but it would seem there's a bit, if not a whole lot of complacency creeping into society and perhaps, just perhaps, we may one day rule the day, uh, the current actions of Zimbabweans and inactions of authorities. Now social media has been the new home of the arts and with a lot of, the, of time on their hands, Zimbabweans have resorted to poking fun at themselves and their circumstances as they battle to stay sane. Today for example, we have the Garamumba concert that shall be beamed on our platforms live from our ZTN studios with a lot of surprise hot guest artists. But on spaces like Twitter especially, some skits are breathing fresh life into known likable figures and names on the Twitter streets. Cody Tinker, aka the Rank Marshal, well he has been uh, entertaining people with his Shona skits around COVID-19 and here is one of them. Hey, so. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Well, that's Cody Tinker. And uh, coming as he is from Christian Bank near Mazoe, the land of Neander, it may well be that Neander has a new sun in vanilla packaging. The mark there is diversity at its best. Keep it up, Cody, and we indeed shall be keeping a close eye on you. And uh, perhaps we shall be coming back to you to show you more and more of Cody as he deals with his social media love and he's really been uh, winning a lot of hearts and minds now we close today with yet another gem but this time from eddie tatenda chitambo another notable twimbo as zimbabweans on twitter are known now he was expressing how he has been forced to be on his own during lockdown and learned to be his own best friend
Indeed, we have really uh, learned to be our own best friends because of physical distancing and can no longer go to the pub and uh, be with our friends. And there, Ed was just trying to remain sane and decided, well, let me show you what's going on in my mind. I've got a new best friend and he lives in my mind. Well, there you have it. It's a lockdown for others and creative time for others. We shall keep tracking the world of the creatives going forward, especially for your viewing pleasure and engage others to bring them onto Diplomatic Passport so they bring us up to speed with their work during lockdown. Look out uh, tomorrow for the big picture of how students are faring at state institutions and their concerns during lockdown as we promised last week. Um, and say what, our partners will be bringing that alongside ZTN to bring you the story on Heartbeat which I'll be hosting tomorrow. Keep your opinions rolling to robinkundiwa at gmail.com or my Twitter handle at zimrobbie, that's Z-I-M-R-O-B-B-I-E. Until tomorrow, I'm Robin Kundiwa. Good evening, stay at home and stay absolutely safe.